Welcome to the Kawartha Small Business Podcast, where we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small businesses. So we created a podcast where we have million dollar conversations that help small business owners thrive. I'm Brian Rump from Profit Coach. And I'm Matt Garrity of Natty Digital. And we're recording from the Thrive Podcast Studio at Thrive Coworking Community in downtown Lindsay, Ontario at 18 Kent Street West. Our sponsor today is Digital Service Squad. Are you a small business owner looking to take your business online? From e-commerce to social media, Digital Main Street has free training, tools, and resources to help you jump in and grow your presence. Visit uh, www.kawarthalakes.ca slash digital service squad or just search in Google for Digital Main Street Kawartha Lakes for more info. All right, Matt, today I'm sure you are very well prepared for our topic. Uh, we are t- roll, please. We are talking about um, being the guide with a plan. So we're diving into a whole uh, episode uh, just about the importance of being a guide with a plan. So uh, this is some story brand language. So I'm a certified story brand guide. We filter in lots of uh, elements of that. Uh, but I think you know one of the key ones is just picturing your business as being the guide with a plan. And a lot of times, uh, you know, people make the mistake of being a hero in a story. And then when they do come around to being a guide, they don't have a plan. So yeah, what are your initial thoughts? Uh, so I talk a lot about this the last couple of years, and I think I'm getting a little bit better versed in it. Um, I talk to a lot of people about how marketing doesn't work because we talk about ourselves too much in marketing and we say that we're the best we've been doing it for so long people don't care about that people care that you have a solution to their problem or people care that they have a problem and they need a solution to the problem they don't care that you're the best at it they don't care that you've been doing it for so long you need to present them an actual uh, plan and guide them to that solution yeah i think um you know, actually presenting the plan, knowing that people are looking for the solution to their problem or the solution to a problem they didn't even know they had, but it's not about you. So, you know, a story brand is about inviting a cu- your customer into a story where they are the hero. Any good story has a character. That character wants something. There's a problem getting in the way of what they want. They need a guide who gives them a plan to help them overcome that calls them to action. And when they take that action, you know, they end up with the happy ending. So that's the the 30 second version of sort of how story works and story brand and what story brand does, but being that guide is really thinking of yourself as that guiding those people and being that guide. It's funny. I think as humans, we almost resist every new idea that comes to us maybe we do so anytime the first time i heard that the whole like the the person has a problem and then someone guides them along and then they become the superhero i'm like well that's baloney that's not true the superhero was always a superhero and he got there on his own um it's not the case every like basic blockbuster standard type of movie and story that we've seen and we know to be famous it all, it's all the exact same. There is a person that is weak at the beginning and at the end they are the superhero, but there is someone in every single story that comes along as the guide. And in reality, like they're probably the superhero, but the fact that they took somebody else and guided them along the path is pretty cool. And uh, I will challenge people. It happens like I, cause now I know this and I watch movies and stuff and it happens, but those movies are, more Oscar type of movies, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, or they're more nuanced. And sure. I think there's some movies too where there's like multiple guide characters. You know, if you look at like the Avengers, mm-hmm. they are all heroes in their own right. But when they come together, they're sometimes guides for whoever the sort of main hero is because they have a skill or they bring something to the table that the other person sort of driving the bus doesn't have. Yeah, I'm like, I haven't seen some of those movies in ages, but 
the Avengers is somewhat interesting because there is a guide that at least guides them together, but all of those superheroes at the time were going down a rabbit hole. All the superheroes at the time had their own origin type of story, and in those stories, they all had guides. Yeah. So, yes, there are small things, but even Nick Fury brought those guys together. He was the guy that brought them all together in the end to yeah. become the Avengers. So, anyways. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's nuanced, and we all live in multiple stories. So, sometimes we're the hero, mm -hmm. sometimes we're the guide. This is where, as a business, you really have to be like, what am I the guide for? You can be the hero in learning something for your own business. I think sometimes people um, make a mistake of they will, you know, on their social media sort of talk about their hero story mm. and think it's marketing and it's not. It's like, hey, you know, I'm terrible at managing my finances or I'm terrible at hiring staff. Well, that's you as a hero running your own business. But when you're marketing and delivering a service, you have to really be the guide in that so my challenge of what i love doing with with businesses is really defining how they are a guide who they are the guide to who they want people to you know see them um you know as the solution to a problem or as the guide for something yeah i also think a lot about how what it means for me to be a guide to people and businesses and this took years to figure out. And now I'm really comfortable saying it. And it wasn't until right now I realized I, I'd get to this part in my sales presentation where I would say I'm an expert. And for years I would be uncomfortable saying that I'm an expert. Um, but it's not that I'm uncomfortable saying that I'm an expert. I think I maybe was hesitating to figure out what does it actually mean to be an expert? I think it means these are my words, but I think it's probably different for different industries, but like from a marketing perspective, you have to be someone with methodologies, processes, plans, frameworks, etc. You're not an expert. You're not a guide. If you are listening to what your, what would you say the person is saying? The character, the character. in your story is, if you're listening to them and taking advice to them to figure out a solution for them. You're not the guy, you're not an expert. Um, if you are making this stuff up as you go, you're not a guy, you're not an expert. Like you need these processes and frameworks. Yeah, I think, um, you know, marketing is an interesting one where uh, there's so many agencies, there's people like you helping. Um, I think defining what you are the guide for is huge because everyone sees marketing and then they'll get angry if they cho have chosen the wrong guide. Yeah. And that's, I think, partly up to the guide to be clear about what they're the guide for. So, you know, for example, I think you are really good in methodologies, processes, making things happen. If people come to you for new, fancy, big, creative ideas, you're probably not that person. Like that's a creative agency. You know, you go to a big time creative agency who might run a campaign for I mean, a business that already exists, has an overall strategy. You know, they're not building the fundamentals like you're building and executing fundamentals. You know, if someone comes to you for social media, they're getting predictable posts that are on a strategy that are helping run the base of their foundation. They're not getting you giving TikTok advice of like, what content to create that's a different type of guide and i think knowing what you're the guide for having the expertise or the authority in that field and knowing you're the guide that helps that character you know is the key to being successful sustainably yeah i like working with small business owners i hate working with corporations where i'm working with another marketing rep and a team and multiple people. And I, I knew that for years. I didn't know why until recently. Um, I like working with small business owners because they come to me with problems and I can guide them to a solution. Um, I, when I work with corporations and, and hierarchies, they don't come to me with problems. They come to me with 
tasks. Yeah. Or like, they need a guide who, or they don't need a guide. They need a marketing assistant. Yeah. Right. They need, um, you know, they're, they're Batman. They need a Robin. They don't need Alfred. Right. Yes. You know, you're, you're, you're the Alfred, right? <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> that's really good. But like, I love one and the people I've worked with the longest, like the HVAC company I've worked with. And I think about this more recently as our relationship is evolving and it's changing in such positive ways. And I love working with them because it's not that I can't take criticism. Um, and like, I don't mind if I do a website or do a social post or whatever. And they're like, I don't like the look of this. They've never really given me that. Um, and I like that, but it's like, what they have always come to me is like, okay, we've got this problem. How are you going to like find a solution for us? That's what I want. I don't want to sit there and be like, well, I don't like this color. It should be that color. I don't like how you said this. It should be that. And like, I know, frankly, it probably doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm looking at holistically a bunch of different things and the changing of one or two words frustrates me like crazy color changes and it's not that i've thought a lot about do i play nice with others <laughs> i've thought a lot about do i work well with others i had a couple people tell me recently that i'm very direct professionally uh, and at first i was kind of like "Ooh, that was like a punch in the gut but i'm okay with it i'm really okay with it the more i've thought about it yeah you have to be i know like i've been told like depending on the situation i'm in i can be very honest and candid and there's times where i've kind of relented and then it doesn't work out. So like I get more and more sort of jerk like if I need to be uh, because I just know there's certain things you have to stand for. And I think that's where you have to be the guide with that authority um, to tell people what they do. And the hero doesn't usually like to listen to the guide yeah. all the time. Right. If you look at Wolverine, you know, he's not listening to, Professor X that much. He's going and getting his uh, butt kicked over and over and over again. Um, but, you know, eventually, you know, they take some of the advice or, you know, something happens. So the hero still has to be the hero. The guide's just there giving them that plan. But knowing that you're the guide with the plan is how you lead to success. Because if you are the business where you're just the assistant mm -hmm. and people will say, hey, we'll do anything you want. And then people complain if it takes too long or like it's not very nice in the end or, you know, if you're just building the website people want and then they complain, you know, they blame you if it doesn't work. Right. Or they, I know you get really uh, upset and rightfully so when they change your SEO words, it's like you are the guide with the authority to get people found and ranked on Google and that is an important thing. So when people come in and change the actual things that make that work, it's frustrating. And partly you could be like, well, if you're giving me money, you can do whatever you want, but that's not the recipe for long-term success. So if you, if you really want to be a guide, you know, you have to stick and help do those things that um, are, are that provide the long-term solution. Yeah. When I first started, and not to talk too much about me, but just so maybe there's some things that are relatable to people. When I first started, I would listen a lot to people and do what they wanted. Okay, I am in this industry and I want to do this tactic. And I'm like, yep, yeah, I'll take their money and we do it. And we do it really well. We'd execute it really well, um, but it wouldn't work. And I knew why. It took some time to figure out a lot of the stuff, but... Now I am to the point where people will call. I just had this conversation with a guy we had coffee with a couple minutes ago where he's like, I think I need to be found on Google. And I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think that there's anybody searching for this. And it plays a part maybe. As I was talking to you 10 minutes ago, I thought of something in my head. Uh, SEO might do something for him. Anyways, um, I'm not just going to take people's money. and Because I know that. I said, I'm like, all right, you're going to. I'm going to do some work for you. I'm going to take your money. You're going to be happy. And then you're going to be unhappy because there's not going to be results and it's not going to make sense. And I have to be honest to you now and tell you it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> I can't three months from now be like, well, of course I told you so. I had a um, mortgage broker that I started working with back in August. And the, the original sales pitch was, 
yeah, we can get found on Google, but like your website sucks. The messaging sucks. It doesn't speak to your audience. It doesn't look like you. It doesn't look like your area or whatever. And he was like, yeah, okay, well, like, let's get started on the SEO and we'll grow into this stuff. It was, sorry, it was Google ads, actually. I was like, okay, fine. And I, I, I was very clear. I'm like, oh, I'm going to talk to you every month about like this and we're going to bring it back up. And I brought it up for six to eight months. And the last couple of months were just dragging on me. And it was every month I knew what the conversation was going to be. Well, it's not working. And my numbers look great. Like the Google numbers up on my yeah. end, great, good, above average. But then I was like, well, we're not getting this. We're not getting that. And every month I was like, I told you. Like, not that I told you so, but I told you. Like, yeah. look, look at this presentation that we talked about months ago. And every single month I've been telling you we need to do this. And he hesitated and resisted and resisted. And I frankly just got sick of it. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to hop on another call. I don't want to waste my 30 minutes of time. Um, I need to back off. And I said, I'm like, I, I didn't, did I put my foot down? It was really nicely said. And like the way I talk now, of course, is maybe a bit more aggressive. But yeah. like, I was very professional, but I was like, hey man, like I'm happy to hop on a call, but like, if you want to proceed this month, you need to do these things and let me do them. And it, he was like, well, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to work. I'm like, that's fine. And we moved on. But uh, it's funny, like, I think when you start doing stuff years ago, you're like, you'll take on anything and you kind of figure it out. But that's the big thing over years that I was thinking about, like how, what is an expert? What is a guy? And I figured it out. Not that I figured it out, but. <laughs> well, I think it's, you know, I don't think you ever, there's never yeah, a no. set in and forget it, but I think there is a choice of what you are the guide for. Mm -hmm. And there's every business goes through periods where you sort of expand and then contract. So you try everything and then you find out where am I really good and build your business around that. Yeah. And that's what I like helping people figure out as well, because it's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Mm -hmm. But when you have that mindset, you know, I've adopted it as well. I've been kind of good guy, knows a lot of stuff in business, but really narrowing down the scope of what are the things I'm trying to do and wrapping my head around being the guide. So I heard a great quote re or last week. It was like, I'm your guide, not your ride. <laughs> so like I've kind of dropped consultant from yeah. my basket of services. Cause I would like to do some uh, consulting for sure. people. But what I've learned is most small business owners who I like to work with as well. I don't like, big corporate, I don't like bureaucracies, um, you want to work with the owner, don't really want consultants. They kind of want to know what you think, but really they want you to just tell them if they're what to do or if they're doing a good job or guide them a little bit versus coming in and doing a whole lot uh, for them. But it takes a while to learn what it is that you want to um, do and you can't do all the things. Um, and that is a good example too, whereas if you just do what the person wants and it doesn't work, then it's really frustrating. It's like, you got to kind of be mean dad sometimes and like, and people will not listen, but then they might come back and, you know, be like, you know, I had this last week, someone almost to the word, you know, they weren't listening to me and I think they were maybe going to fire me. And I was like, well, this is what's going to happen if you continue this path. <laughs> and then two weeks later, I was like, oh, that exact thing you said is exactly what happened, right? So you have to you know, do those things and be that guide. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, the conversation with the broker was interesting. And like I said, or you just said too, like, okay, the person saying it's not working, it's not working, it's not working. It's like, well, I know why it's not working. You have to listen. We even went down a path of a dedicated landing page for it. And then I'm like, I just like a silly, ugly wireframe of this is what we do. Send it off to their designer. It's probably really cheap. And then the designer disagreed with me. And then the broker disagreed with me. And I was like, honestly, I don't care about it anymore. Like, I've checked it. Like, we move on from yeah. this. But all, it was like you said, it's not a sudden and forget it because I wasn't just like kicking and screaming of like, you're not listening to me. I told you so. What it taught me, and I don't know if this can be helpful for a lot of people listening, but like anytime I don't do like a holistic plan of multiple things at once, um, if I'm just doing Google Ads, I have to do landing pages for people. 
Mm-hmm. Like I have to. I have to have some control over what the page says when we send people to it. Yeah, otherwise, like it's, it's the same. It's the same thing over and over. Yeah, you're just. And I think that's the. It, it makes it hard, right? And like marketing is hard. I think a lot of small businesses and people listening, we kind of always hope for that one thing that's just going to like make you go viral or like explode. But that's not how it works. Um, and you're always dealing with constrained resources until you're to a certain scale where you can try things a little bit. But you need that, you know, to do maybe the small things you need to do to then trust that thing. So in your story, you know, you know something's not going to work, but there's a, a timeline on that to where they're going to like listen and take the next step or they're going to go away. So, you know, you learn things and that also, you know, fits into, you know, a guide has a plan. And I think to, you know, bridge into the plan section, most businesses don't really have a plan. It's kind of like, well, what depends what you want to do. You know, the guide now is like, hey, I have a plan. Here's what we need to do if we want the success you want. If they reject some of that plan, you know, it doesn't mean the relationship's over. Maybe you have to give them one step at a time versus the next 10 steps. But you have to be guiding them with the plan. Here's what to do. You know, make it easy for people to understand. Uh, be the expert that you are and show them the plan. And I think we talk to a lot of businesses and we see people where they kind of hope the customer figures it out. Mm-hmm. And I would, I, a classic example, when I look at when I first started with the mm-hmm. I wasn't planning on being sort of self-employed. I was like, oh, I can do all of these things, which is a true statement, but no one was going to guess what I could do. For yeah. them. And you're always trying to refine that plan. Like, what's the next? best step and then what's the next step after that it's just you know the thing about everything you're saying and everything we're talking about is just a marketing conversation it's just well it's just fascinating when like, people still just think what you said at all maybe something will catch it or go viral but like what does it even mean so like i talked to a contractor recently who went viral on tiktok they're a small contractor that works out of their home locally doing plumbing what are they going to do? And she's like, "Well, how do we capitalize on this?" And I'm like, "I don't know if you can." <laughs> yeah. And like, I, I'm like, well, I, "I'm not looked at it, but like, where are you getting a lot of these views?" And well, we know it's not locally and this, that, but it's like, you can. It, it doesn't always make sense. Does it? Like, you, it, that's a somewhat old idea. That, like, it just doesn't work. Yeah, you can get famous, but unless you can have a plan to monetize that. Or tell people who are, who are watching, hey, come to here to buy this thing. Or here's here's what your next step is, right? The, here's how it works. First, you do this. It's repeating it over and over, which a lot of people resist. I resist it as well. I'm starting to get a lot better at repeating sound bites over. But that's what marketing is. And, you know, that's inviting people into a story, right? Like people will uh, rip on Hallmark movies. Because you can almost guess what's going to be said, but they're watching them and they love them because they follow a formula. So in our marketing, we need to do the same thing and we might revive it all the time, but we need to have a plan for people. It's like, hey, I've caught your attention. You now see me as a guide to help you solve your problem. Now I need to like tell you what to do so that you can get the sale and, you know, make people um, just feel comfortable, confident that they picked the right guy. Being a guy is being intentional. And being an expert is being intentional. I used to tell people, designers all the time, the best designers I ever worked with, you'd ask them about something on a logo and they'd have an explanation for it. Like why that piece was like that, why that went this way, why this color was, they'd always have an answer for it. And they were the best designers. And I think that's the case for all guys. Like you have to be intentional with everything that you do like i get the question and whether it's criticism or just a conversation of people like why is this the same all the time like social media our co-owner of fried asked me last week man our social media sure is repetitive like maybe we can do this and i'm like i explained it to them why 
And then they're like, oh, that makes sense. And you have these conversations with people. If you're able to explain all of your actions in, in an intentional way, that's what makes you feel alive. Oh, yeah. And I think the, um, yeah, understanding that, again, using story and be like, here's why we decided to do this. It builds that trust of knowing, like, oh, you thought about this. You know, you're not learning it at the same speed. I forget that all the time, and I know I'm not the best at communicating my thought process, and most of my clients don't care about that, or they're like, oh, I just trust that you've thought this out. But like, I, you know, sometimes run an idea through like a million filters of tools of things I've read to be able to like explain it. So if someone's like, well, why do this and not that? You're right, you need an explanation as to why we're doing that, and linking it to what the goal is. You know, I think of even it's so frustrating dealing sometimes with like contractors and renovators because mm-hmm. a lot of them they just want to do the work, mm-hmm. but they're and then they they probably get beaten up by pricing so much and they just get sick of the same questions over and over. Um, this is a side note, but if you're finding yourself getting sick of the same questions as a business owner, that's your fault, and you need to like answer those at scale or or just be happy answering. Like, oh yeah, I get that all the time. Here's what we do and why. You know, linking it to the plan. Because sometimes they're just expecting clients to tell them what to do, right? And then it's frustrating as a client to know who to pick because nobody really seems to have a plan to help get what you want. They're all kind of hoping that you're gonna tie that plan together yeah. for them. So you know, having that strong presence as a guide with a plan mm-hmm. is what. I think is a key. Well, I think it's mandatory to grow a small business. Like small business is so hard because you don't have huge resources. You can't experiment a lot. You can't waste a lot of money. So like you have to be a guide and you have to have a plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. Any other thoughts? Is my final thought that you would ask me? Uh, I think so. I think we just like. I don't know how much more we can go on this. <laughs> I love talking about the guide stuff. I think it's interesting. Um, it's something I almost get frustrated with now. <laughs> yeah. Like when people are like hesitant with the idea of like being a guide or like in, in bringing the character into your story. I get really frustrated by it. But also I was the same guy years ago because yeah. you were probably like, <laughs> I'm sweating. You're probably the same way. We're like, I've been telling you for so long. Yeah, I, I think, like and that's kind of why, so sort of why I'm a story brand guide is to help people through that shift. And like, again, I'm getting better at how do I, because I know it's a barrier, like how do I bring people through that? And I think it's scary because when you're, you know, you're sitting there like, I've done all this stuff. I've built this business and now your paradigm shifts. And I know you've said it where you're like, oh man, everything I've done is wrong. Yeah. And it's not necessarily wrong, but it seems so overwhelming in that moment to reshift your entire business. It's not really that hard. There's ways to simplify it and make some little changes when you have the right guy to help you with it. But I think it's the key to really grow. Otherwise, you just are on a treadmill and you're going to deal with the same problems over and over. People don't like go on treadmills though. People don't like working out, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a treadmill. It's the loop. It's the like yeah. People get stuck in the business and like nothing seems to be growing. Yeah, and until you really are like, okay, I'm the guide. What am I the guide for? And get that more and more specific. And I think you know what I'm really focusing on in my own business is continually narrowing that down and defining it more and more. I think there's always pressure to, when you start, people be like, oh, what's your niche? You'll define it quickly. Yeah. I don't know that there's a shortcut to it necessarily. I think you always need to be carving things off the edge, but there's no easy way to just do it. Like you gotta, you still gotta try a bunch of things and just be out there for a bunch of stuff and re- review it over time, um, but you have to get in that mindset of I'm the guide, because then when someone's saying something to you, 
you may go oh, yeah, I am the guy in the plan. And if it works really well, I'm like, okay, I need to go find more of that customer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's the nature of us now, though, where it's almost like a trendy thing, too. Like, oh, have you figured out your whole business? Like, I know you just launched, but like, tell me exactly who you want to work with for the rest of your life. Now. Oh, yeah. Which isn't the, like, I don't know. Do you think business owners ask people that question, or is it me? <laughs> I call them uh, entrepreneurs by proxy. Well, you, you used to call it something else. It was like entrepreneurs were something else. So, so like armchair entrepreneurs? Maybe? Something like that. It was like, I don't know, it was a good little pun. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> like I think about who I used to work with or who I wanted to work with years ago. And, I don't even want to work with those people anymore. I still want to work with small business owners. And like I said, I just kind of figured out why. But now it's different. Like I like working with blue collar contractors, um, B2B, not B2B, sorry, um, but just like HVAC companies, electricians, plumbers, home builders, mill workers. You want to know what all of those people have in common? No. They're guides. They're guides. That's true, actually. I think I was. I, uh, sent you some language on this a few weeks ago and I think um you know geographic guides right people want the plumber in their community right they want the carpenter in their community to show up the guide that they trust to give them the project that they want so you're a specialist at getting those people found when people are looking for them so you're like the guide for guides in a way, a stir, people delivering a service in that area. It's not the, sure. you know, a lot of sort of like, say, tech entrepreneurs, they want to get famous and they want to get funding. That's a whole different business model yeah. than what you and I want to work with, right? There may be the ones where it's like, hey, have you figured out your whole business model yet? Or did you do in-depth research on your target clients? Yeah. And do you know all the stats for like yeah. have you market research? all of these things? and you know, in a way, it's like, yeah, I have done some market research, but not, you know, a million dollars worth of market research. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you find the experts who kind of just know things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or isn't everyone, every business a guide, though? They should be, yeah. I think every business, every, if you're a not-for-profit, like, you have to figure out that you're the guide. Again, in marketing and even in how we design it, people think of themselves as the hero sometimes when we don't know what we're the guide for, you know, we sputter or we're confusing. So the more you can narrow down what you're that guide for, the better business you're going to build. Yeah. Right. So you, you know, you, the people you like to work with, I think, want to be the guide or they're going to come around to big positioning themselves as the guide mm -hmm. for what their person wants because they can't do everything. And even on an SEO basis, like no one comes and is like, I want to rank for everything that everyone's searching for. Like that's impossible and yeah. it makes no sense. Right. But if you can really narrow down what you're the best at, mm -hmm. then you can do it. Right. If you're a plumber, you could be the best at 24 hour emergency service. You could be the best at a bathroom renovation that looks like this. Yeah. Because you, you know, if you're one guy, say a one person in a van shop, you can't do all of the things and be profitable. Mm -hmm. So it's like you got to pick something that you're the guide for. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's you want to dominate Google on that keyword or dominate them with multiple keywords, but. It's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. And the good news is, like, I think with things like that, you know, when I'm looking for a plumber, I don't want somebody coming from Chatham, Ontario. Mm. Like, I want somebody coming from probably within an hour of my house. Or yeah. there's a certain radius where that's who you're going to trust to do mm. that job. So with that, there's always some locality to it. So... You know, it's defining, again, who your market is. Is it geographically bound? Is it industry? Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things like that where you want to start making these decisions of who you're a guide to. And then having the clear plan. So when you actually do find those people or they find you on Google, like they actually understand what you do. Yeah. And know what the plan is to get it. Mm -hmm. um, and 
versus, hey, I just spent $50 for you to click on my page. No, if you can guess how to give me yeah. money, <laughs> I'll let you give me some, but like you need the, the you know, to take them through the plan. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Awesome. Any more thoughts? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today. All right. So in conclusion, be the guide with the plan. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about talk to you more about that. Uh, Matt, what is the one thing you want listeners to know and how do they find you? You asked me this last time and then I wanted to put more thought into it every time and we either come up with a, a similar one every time or if I should mix it up every time. I'm not super sure, but like maybe I'll stick with not enough people know that your business exists. Yes, you listener in your car right now. Not enough people know that your business exists and that's the reason why it's not growing. I can help you get found on Google in less than 60 days locally. So give me a call at 905-259-5718. Awesome. And I am the business coach and teacher that helps your business get money with grants, increased sales, and streamlining your business for revenue and profit. Find me at profitcoach.ca. Uh, Matt and I uh, collaborate uh, often and we want to help you start, grow, or recharge your business. And we want to work with you. Uh, if you want to discuss working with us or be a guest on the podcast, uh, send us an email to set it up at Kawartha Small Business Podcast.ca. And remember, we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small businesses. <laughs>